Hello, everybody. My name is Bob, and we're playing From the Depths. Um, now, I usually go back to playing From the Depths about it once every six months to a year, because by then I've forgotten how fucked up the campaign is and, and, uh, and how much uh, it consumes your life uh, and your time. And I don't, I don't, I've got, I got other things to do with my time. But still, usually about once every year or to six months, uh, I, I start, you know, like watching um, um, naval history videos, and I start thinking about, well, what if, what if I did this in From the Depths? And so I get sucked in, back into it about once every six months to a year. Um, now this time, getting back into it really was punishing for me. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I as much forgot how to play, but uh, maybe my standards were higher or something. I don't know. But anyway, but it seems like it took me quite a while to sort of get back into it. Um, to get anything like good at it uh so um and i'm still i guess still have you know my share of issues with it uh i mean my, my issues with with um technically building good vessels uh but anyway here we are this is the fleet for the 2023 campaign which probably isn't going to last much longer than the deep water guard just because you know about that time they just start piling ships on resource nodes and it just gets tedious so my, the, actually, the very first ships I probably you know, like, like at, at the absolute outset uh, will be um, actually let's let's get rid of this. Uh, probably one of the first ones I will, will make is uh, this one. Oh no. Is this the one? That's the one. Okay. Basically, it's just uh, a uh, resource miner. It just goes to a resource point and uh, and gathers very slowly. Gathers resources. There's not there's not not a whole lot to it. And so once it gets inside the resource zone, it'll turn off. And then it'll just uh, harvest resource, resources and, and maneuver itself back into the resource zone if it drifts away, pretty much. Okay, uh, another thing that I probably will do straight away is um, go ahead and scrap that. Another one I'll do probably straight away is a, um, a simple little defense base. Um, and it just goes down a little ways and has missiles and torpedoes. Let's go ahead and bring in a, a, a loadout that's uh, similar to what might be expected like straight away. Uh, deep water guard, a sea viper, a vanguard. Let's go to a scrapper and a shrike. That's gone. Now this shrike could actually do some harm to me because uh, uh, because it's got bombs. And depending on how those bombs are set up, kaboosh! But it is no longer a problem. Ah, uh, slight, slight amount of damage. Not really a problem. Yeah, 
Hey, let's go. I suppose you want to turn around? No? Uh-uh. You don't want to turn around? Okay. Not sure how it gets um, a sonar reflection from nothing, but whatever. Not that it matters. Okay, um, and as far as um, actual vessels, probably uh, the at the very first and not beyond that, I'm probably going to just bring back my uh, old uh, dories uh, because they're, they're cheap and they, they get the job done against early enemies. Uh, so... Dory M, which is a uh, a missile, and Dory, which is torpedoes. All right, let's uh, bring in something a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'll drop in a Kalmar and a. Panjandrum, and just for just for grins, we'll throw in a plane too. I probably should let me uh, let me go ahead and pull this. That's a um, uh, radar boy. Oh, these are pretty fast. They're 30 meters a second for, for little stone blocks. They got no real defenses or armor to speak of. Basically, it's just stone on the outside. But again, it's a um, it's a early uh, like probably the first first couple things I'll build will be these and then that's probably about it. I need to put some um, anti-torpe missiles on this thing because those, those um those decoys don't seem to work all that great. I'd rather have the um, anti uh, torp, torp torps. Anti torp torps. Okay, well, since the um, the Dorys have not taken any damage, um, and uh, these guys definitely have, we're going to just assume that uh, that we would win this one. Boosh! Yep, gone. And where is that other one? You go, you just go to space. He's gone now, in any case. Alright, so once um, 
Yeah, I'll probably build, you know, two to four of those um, just to get me started. Uh, and then um, I'm going to be building uh, uh, these sort of more intermediate class of submarines. This is the uh, home can, 77,000 resources. Uh, it's um, just torpedoes. And um, similarly, the paddlefish is just missiles. Uh, let's, uh, let's up our uh, game here a little bit. Not the Alcazar, no. Um, something that's sort of roughly on a par with what I've got going here. I don't need to spawn it that far up. The uh, paddlefish is not quite as fast as the uh, dories are. Uh, I think the home cat is a, a bit faster. Uh, 26 meters a second. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. This, I don't think has torpedoes. Um, really, it's kind of uh, hopeless uh, for, for them. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and destroy enemies. I'm bringing something that has torpedoes, so you can see the uh, the torpedo action. Steel striders. Uh, Okay, what I'm picking up is the Braveheart, which is considered to be a godly uh, class ship, so it may actually kick my ass, uh, but uh, we will find out. The, the point here is to uh, just to uh, kind of demonstrate the, um, the uh, anti-torps. Something went boom. I got ammo racked. Time to transfer my flag. Listening. We doing going somewhere here? I need to get rid of that. Listening. Okay, there's the anti anti torps. We seem to be doing a pretty good job of keeping them away from me. Well, I do not appear to have done anything to him. But anyway, the point of a bit. Obviously, this, this, these are not equal forces. Um, uh, in terms of their sophistication, but um, uh, but the point was to to, to uh, demonstrate the uh, anti uh, torp anti torps. Yeah, this this, this vehicle this is, this is um, a claim jumper vehicle. So basically, if there's a uh, square that doesn't need to be defended, you just send it over, and uh, it will um, 
it will claim it. And also, if there's maybe there's been a neighboring battle between the, the AI, you can just go over there and suck up the resources. Uh, and it doesn't cost very much at all. So it's just um, basically just um, a disposable craft for uh, claim jumping and for um, and for um, resource scavenging. This is my um, my uh, my spy satellite. Uh, the name of our fleet is going to be the Boomer Navy. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah. Oh, steampunk Somali. See, uh, basically, um, it, this is um, something that's designed to uh, for a, for a capture vessel. So, uh, and also a very early capture vessel. So that's, that's probably the only time that I would really bother with with capturing instead of just destroying. Um, so, um, uh, the idea of this is it's something that's uh, cheap, fast uh, that I can steer, and that I can use it to, to jump off and capture boats and bases and stuff. Uh, no, I guess I I may not have um, I may not have updated this since I put these hologram projectors here, and so I can't actually get out now. Hold on. Can I get out? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, I can remember my uh, manual controls here. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. I need to get over by the this one. Yeah. So basically, it just um, flies in at um, at low altitude uh, and uh, fairly fast. And so, in theory, I could just uh, yeah, jump off, and then hopefully uh, actually capture whatever the uh, whatever the base or um, or a ship, or whatever it is. Lift me. And it's super simple, just an engine, uh, rockets, or jets, uh, a gas envelope, uh, some some thruster controls, some PIDs and such to to control the altitude, uh, because I won't be wanting to, I wanted to keep it at this, this altitude as it's uh, approaching. So I just had that be automatic rather than have to worry about controlling it. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Oh, here's the um, the Flabberdicky Bomber. And I have not tried to, to really apply. I mean, in the past, I tried to have some sort of consistent naming convention like naming all submarines after fish and naming all airships after whales and so on i've, I've just given that up i'm just I'm just like whatever comes to my mind I, I've, I've made so many of these things that that um very original ideas are not really that much uh, in play here so i just whatever stupid thing comes to my mind that's what i call it and this is the flabberdicky Take a look inside. Uh, 
uh, basically these are mines. Now they do actually do have a um, uh, a uh, radar um, guidance on it. That's just to control the fin so that when as it falls, it's going to aim itself towards the enemy. Uh, but uh, otherwise, these are just mines. Uh, see, it does have a radar seeker. Seeker has a magnet. Um, and uh, explosive and EMP warheads, uh, ballast tank, and a regulator, and one set of fins. So basically, it's it's to kind of ooch, ooch the uh, mines a little closer to the enemy when uh, when it comes time to uh, to bomb them. Uh, got an engine, uh, AI, and a uh, custom jet engine over here to make it all go forwards. And that's pretty much what we've got here. And the um, the nose uh, is uh, nose and underside are, are more armored because um, I figure it's going to be heading right towards something, so it's going to be taking most damage theoretically there. Also, just a little bit of armor on the back here, a little metal. Uh, so, and for whatever reason, I can't it, it, when the, the enemy shows up, it, it acts just like it's supposed to. But but uh, when there's not an enemy around, it's like it stays real low for some reason. I have no idea. So let's go ahead and bring in something. I'll bring in a Kalmar. And again, it's on a, a, um, a bombing run AI. It seems to want to, to turn around or do a do a flip when it gets near the, uh, the enemy. I have no idea why that is. One of the many mysteries. Uh, I think uh, yeah, this needs to go away. Yeah, one of those cram shells hits it. It's probably got a real problem, but. Yeah, again, it does uh, seem to do a uh, uh, a a roll um, when it's um, heading towards the enemy, but it seems to work okay. And why why the, why it's doing the whole roll thing? I have no idea. Like that. I have no idea what the hell's going on with that. Well, it seems to get the job done in any case. Here they come. Kaboosh! 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 And it does seem to do the, the, the roll every time. Why? I have no idea. I did, I did, not, I did not make it to do that. It, it just does it. Like I can't figure out what it's doing. So it just rolls in place. Now I suppose it could be somewhat, you know, good evasion. You know. Maybe, maybe it's not a bad thing. And goodbye. Okay, uh, let's see? Yeah. Suicide boat was just something I, um, I, sort of an idea I threw out there. Uh, basically, it uses pneumatic missiles, it just charges straight toward the enemy. A cheap, flimsy little wooden boat charges straight toward the enemy. Launches a bunch of um, uh, missiles on pneumatic power only, just the power of the ejectors, um, and uh, it tears stuff up. But it's it's also super fragile, so you know probably won't actually use that. Uh, some of these are failed ideas. 
or I just, just didn't, didn't work out well enough for me to, to want to do something with them. Uh, okay, we'll go and bring in the uh, the foresight. This is my big airship. Even then, compared to a lot of things, it's not that big, you know. This is kind of the successor to the, the Centurion from my last campaign. Uh, let's uh, get rid of this. And we'll bring in something more worthy. Uh, CS Riders. Yeah, that's this is 200. Uh, trying to find something that's Spectre. I have no idea. Let's try the Victoria. I've, ne I've never, I haven't tried it after this. Uh, you know, I haven't tried it against this particular vessel. It might kick my ass. We don't know. We'll find out. Now this is a one-sider, which means the guns all go out one side. As long as it can turn and go go fast enough, that's really not a problem. Uh, I do have little little uh, guns here for AA for for, for anti-air, um, but it's really just. And it's, yeah, I have these um, these large missiles here, which are fairly easily countered, unfortunately, uh, but. Um, Mostly it's the guns, uh, and the guns it's a one-sider, which for an airship, if it's going fast, if it's if it turns fast quickly, really is not a problem, and it, it makes some things a little bit bit easier uh, in terms of you're not losing space to turrets. You, you can you can you know armor things a little bit more efficiently sometimes. Boosh, boosh. Those those large missiles. If they get through, they do a good a good job. But you know, they're fairly easy to counter. Unfortunately, I didn't really have the space for you know big ass Mondo missiles. He lost a turret and lost his butt. That force eight pretty much stays at a distance and hammers with, uh, with the guns and um, you know hopes that the missiles will uh, will get through, which right now they're doing because it's pretty messed up. This thing. Do they have any uh, turrets that are still functional? Nope, doesn't appear to be. They're not firing. Oh, this thing's pretty fast, 146 meters a second, which for a, a big old airship, that's, that's uh, pretty fast. Uh, these things may not look pretty, but they're um, uh, basically um, uh, missile decoys, uh, and they work pretty well, so that's why I have them on there. Uh, I also have uh, anti-missile missiles, which are, where are they? I got a little scuffed up, not bad. Anti-missile missiles are right here. We're going to assume that's not going to make it. Uh, I'm going to destroy it so I can kind of take a look. Now, this thing has a problem that I've, I've seen with... Uh, well, actually, this one doesn't, I don't think. But uh, some, some of my uh, airships, they they, uh, they don't get to their normal or the, the altitude they're supposed to be. Yeah, this one's doing the same thing. Uh, they don't get to the altitude that they're supposed to be at uh, until the enemy shows up. Until then, they're they're uh, relatively low. I don't know why that is. I, yeah, 
I'm going to ask around and see if I can figure out why they do that. But um, once the enemy shows up, they do fine. But but uh, until then, they um, they fly like real low like this. All right. Um, let's take a look here. Here's the ammo. You go ahead and take the skin off. Up here is the uh, engine. I just used use one of the preset engines because the, the engine is not that uh, big of a uh, part of it. Uh, I don't use the engine for that much. So I just threw, threw in a, a prefab. Uh, actually, no, I guess I probably had to probably had to um, uh, put in another one too. I guess I wasn't getting enough power from that one. Uh, batteries. The batteries are here uh, for the railguns. Here's the, the AI. There's a lot of sensors on this thing, so so there's a lot of has to be a lot of these uh, uh, process, processing cards uh, because there's a lot of sensors on it. Uh, here's the uh, here's the guns um, again because you're not having to be in a turret, you can you can arrange these things however you want. Um, you know, so it, it, there's a lot of ways it can be uh, a lot more convenient to do it that way. Let me go ahead and put the skin back on right quick. So you see it's only really uh, armored at the front and the back. And that's, that's just uh, also just slopes um, with the heavy armor. Which And, and also there's, um, there's actually uh, three layers. There's the outer skin. There's um, a layer of alloy uh, tubes here. Uh, alloy cylinders. And then uh, in front of the guns, there's this layer of uh, heavy armor slopes. Um, and again, it can be helpful not to have to fit things into turrets every time. And really, functionally, it makes no difference because it turns so fast and it goes so fast that, that it can it can turn its side to, to whatever it wants to, pretty much. Uh, so as long as that's the case, you can do a, a one-sider really with no... Uh, repercussions uh, to speak of. Um, there's the custom jet engines for um, for roll and uh, lift. That's the that's a pusher. That's a pusher and roller. Got some more over here. The uh. Okay, over here is the uh, sensor suite. Um, do I really need all this processing power? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's really sort of uh, basic um, uh, sensors. I had more than that, though. Yeah, I was fairly sure I had more, um, more sensors than that. Oh, okay, here they are. Yeah, here's um, there's something that's on a um, uh, weapon controller that basically turns toward the enemy and uh, has has a, a larger array array of uh, of sensors. The um, the radars are are, are really good, uh, but the problem is that they you have to have an actual physical hole to shoot them out of. Uh, so look here. It actually has to have um, a hole here. For the radar you can't do it through a window like you can some of these others uh so um there's that oh and here's the um the uh coincidence range finder on it okay i was pretty sure i had more sensors than just those um let's see you have three big old custom jet engines to um 
to make it go forward and it goes forward pretty darn fast for a big airship 143 meters a second not too shabby I got oh, so I got, got a second ammo dump over here too I got lots of ammo Uh, the um, the AI uh, is insulated behind uh, one layer of alloy, one layer of alloy tubes, uh, one layer of um, heavy armor, and one layer of stone for EMP protection. Uh, and it has um, uh, repair bots inside with resources inside because I figure, you know, uh, it's not always necessary, but sometimes if, if uh, you're putting down a repair bot, might as well put down a little resource box next to it just so if you're if your ship is really screwed um, and you don't actually have any resource containers left and maybe you're just kind of like an AI afloat in the ocean trying to put itself back together again uh, you need to have some resources so you, that's why I do that uh, here's the um, uh, anti-missiles basically um, uh, any uh, missile inter interceptors frag warheads bins and, and thrusters and fuel tank real basic There's nothing in here. I think I, except for smoke. Uh, uh, I, I think I plan to uh, to have. Um, oh, there's another engine in here. Yep, get another engine. I guess I, I actually needed uh, uh, more uh, engine power than I thought I did. Um, yeah, I, I was planning on putting uh, torpedoes in here, but it's just too small. I would have to have them shooting out uh, in the front and. Um, if it's something, something is going this fast and which stays this far away from uh, the enemy, uh, that's kind of a problem for torpedoes. I mean, if you have some really, really long-lived, really long, bit, lots of fuel uh, type of, um, of things, um, then I suppose it could be okay. But uh, it just didn't wasn't working out for me, so I didn't do it. Now let's uh, let's throw down something. I'm gonna test myself. I'm gonna I'm gonna push push things. Uh, I probably well, if I can if I can do it with that with something that's sort of roughly um, a oh we'll we'll try the Rhea. I probably should get my ass kicked because this is almost almost twice as many resources and more, more twice as many materials. Um, and and um, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's steel uh, steel striders hard uh, vessel, so it's 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 no. It's no picnic, so um, I'm gonna get my ass beat. Let's find out. And that placement was not very good. I suppose you could say this is one disadvantage of the, having the one sider is that when it's actually fleeing away from the enemy, um, it's. Um, it can't shoot, but I mean, again, it's real fast, so it'll get to the right distance pretty quickly, and it will turn to the to the right angle pretty quickly. So it's really not not a, a big issue. Am I doing any hurt? I'm going to say that the Rhea is going to, going to win this one, but it, which it should have. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's twice as many resources as, I, as me. Or not, you know, not twice as many. How many was it? Uh, Rhea is, yeah, pretty close to twice as many. So, so yeah, it should have, it should have won. Now I, I, I um, designed a airship to act as an escort for this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to actually use it in the campaign. Uh, but we'll just kind of load it in here just to take a look. Lifting. Lifting. 
It's actually more expensive than that one. Um, the uh, the problem with it is is the uh, guns are, are are oriented towards anti air and anti um, anti um, uh, missile, uh, so it, it doesn't actually have a big offensive loadout against uh, uh, vessels. So um, I think we'll go ahead and uh, take a look inside. This one does have turrets. Uh, the turrets are uh, really focused towards uh, anti-missile and um, uh, anti-air. Uh, so like I said, it's, a, it's an escort. Uh, this one does, does have torpedoes. It's got, got more uh, anti-missiles. Let's, uh, let's load up something that uh, can kind of test that out. We'll load up two Banshees. Uh, virus is taking some uh, some damage. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it lost a turret. We lost both turrets. But again, like I said, it's probably not not something I would actually use uh, uh, in the campaign because I, I had uh, designed it to be um, an escort and for the uh, foresight, and it costs more than the foresight. So that's that's not. Not really a good thing. Okay. This is probably not something I'm actually going to use for the campaign, but um, I figured I'd show, I'd show, I'd show it anyway. Uh, it's basically sort of like a, a patrol hydrofoil. Uh, we'll just we'll just throw in a, um, a marauder to. How come you so slow? Move it. Ooh, it got crammed. One reason why I probably would not actually use this in the campaign, uh, apparently. Uh, let's uh, just for just for grins, let's bring in the suicide ships. And this only, only costs ten thousand. And again, basically, the one weapon is a, a pneumatic um, missile launcher. Um, and I guess the missiles will probably have magnets on them uh, for mines. And it just charges right straight through at them, pounds, pounds them in, turns around, runs into each other, and then runs off. And, you know, if they, if they, don't, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Zero fucks given. I probably won't use this in campaign. Submarines are, are so capable uh, and so excellent for the, the early um, um, campaign. It's kind of hard to justify. But uh, probably a, like a, a whole squadron of these guys um, uh, because they, they're able to repair each other might, might work. Mm 
listening. Go ahead and scrap that. They're a ballsy little craft. I guess I'll give them that. Let's try. Let's try something. Yep. Whoop. Let's try something a little more. I'll throw down a calmar. What the hey? Gotta test the uh, the squadron uh, aspect of it. Oh, nope. Suicide boat, don't give a fuck. Oh, that was gone. <laughs> Caboosh. Yeah, I mean they're exceedingly squishy. You know, they're, they're not they're not at all survivable. Uh, hence the name Suicide Boat. Come on, little guy. You're our last hope. You could be our hero. Or not. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's, that's fun, you know. It, 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 was, it was not so much that this was a, a great design, it just it was a fun design, you know. Okay, our last design for now is just my, my airship freighter. It's real cheap. Let me go ahead and just head over here. Basically just an uh, engine, uh, lots of alloy plate, a big uh, hole for the gas to go in. Well, I got a custom jet engine on that. That's, that's kind of wild. I didn't realize. I thought it was just a normal jet engine. Okay. I got my um, little command center here. Uh, it goes 99 meters a second. Real cheap. Uh, like I said, 10,000 Eleven thousand um, uh, resource, uh, and it carries resources to to wherever I need them to go. It carries quite a lot of them. So I can just spawn these out, fill them up with resources, send them off to wherever they need they need resources, and we're good to go. I don't even, I don't even have any controls in here because it would I would never actually you know have need to manually control it. Alright, that's all for right now. Until next time, hasta la vista. Adios.